Becky. Welcome back to my channel. I have another homeschooling video for you guys. If you like homeschooling videos, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Today, I'm going to be sharing our homeschool year in review. Um, by the time I'm actually filming this, we are almost done. By the time you see it, we should be done, I think. Um, so <laughs> there was a lot of changes and a lot of things that, that went on this year. Uh, that I want to go over with you. I have two pages of notes. I'm going to try really hard not to talk too long, but you know I usually do, so hopefully it won't be too long. I've broken it up into kids, so my oldest, I'm going to talk about her and her changes and what we've kind of tweaked and doing with her, and then my youngest next. My oldest daughter, I think with her curriculum, we had the most changes. I literally changed her writing and grammar program, I think, three times at the beginning of the year. We started out with IEW, um, which I've talked about before, I think it's a great program. It just stopped working for us. So, but we'd already started the year with IEW. So I had to, I had to do like a 360 and try to figure out, okay, what are we gonna do now that this is not working? So we switched from IEW to writing with skill. Did not like that. We switched from that to paragraphs from middle school, which actually was pretty good um, until about towards the end. And then we switched to like a Mark Twain publisher's writing program. You can get like the PDF online. Um, so we switched to that and we basically did the paragraphs for middle school mixed with the Mark Twain thing for the rest of the school year because I really did not know uh, what I was going to use for her. I like the paragraphs for middle school. It uses a lot of um, looking at examples of published authors and using those references to kind of see different sentence structures and different types of clauses and different ways to write things figuratively. But I did find, and I was a little worried about this, but she, my daughter said it wasn't going to be an issue. But I did find that she started writing in a lot of fragments, like a lot of the people were um, in the book. Now I realize that authors for some reason don't a lot of times follow the rules of grammar. They have broken sentences and fragments and this and that and comma, comma, comma. And it just, I was a little worried that emulating those things from that book um, would cause that to happen with her. And I do think it did finally end up happening. And I was like, okay, it's time to stop this. We're not gonna start doing all these fragmented sentences and all that stuff. So. Because the point of this right now is not to, yes, I want her to write creatively, but I also want her to follow a little bit of structure, conventional writing structure. So that was her writing that we kind of changed up and put together and tried to make something work. Um, and then for grammar, we went from the IEW Fix-It Grammar to First Language Lessons for the Well-Trained Mind. They have a high school level now, which we did not do for very long because it is very, very, very hard um, as a teacher and as a student. Um, not that I don't want her to be challenged, but I was not smart enough in grammar to teach that to her. Um, and then so we went from that to the, back to the Evan Moore uh, daily paragraph editing, which I do like and I do recommend, even if you're using a different um, grammar curriculum, I think it's a good thing to throw in every now and again just to teach them to read other people's writing and check it for grammatical, grammatical and spelling errors. So still do like that. Um, and then we went to finally Khan Academy um, every single day. They have an entire grammar program. I wouldn't say it's good enough for like the only thing you're ever intending to do for grammar. I guess you could if you really were able to supplement it. Um, but she did learn quite a bit from it and it was something to do um, to keep her, you know, keep her grammar skills a little bit sharp while I was trying to figure out what we're gonna do moving forward, which if you saw my homeschool haul I did a couple weeks ago, I did show you that I bought the Bob Jones University uh, Writing and Grammar Level 9. Now I bought that before I had heard so many people say that the upper levels of Bob Jones uh, Writing and Grammar program was not very good, because um, we just started the third level, third grade level with my youngest daughter um, at the end of second grade. So. I don't know, I'm a little bit hesitant now to start it because it does look a little bit teacher intensive and I was hoping for something for my ninth grader, soon to be ninth grader, um, that was a little bit more student led. So I don't know yet if I'm gonna keep it, if I'm going to try it and then if, if it doesn't work, switch it again, I don't know. Um, but the other option I'm looking at is the, um, the, the Good and the Beautiful. They actually are just releasing their high school language arts program. Um, it's gonna be out in May or June, I believe. So. That is very tempting. It's very tempting for me to just return the Bob Jones thing and try the, fur, the uh, Good and the Beautiful. I don't know yet. You'll find out, I guess, in my curriculum choices video, which I've decided to do. Um, but basically, the whole point of this rant was that writing and grammar, we really struggled with finding something that we liked that worked. Um, and I'm still not sure we found anything that has, that's going to work. But that was the bulk of the changes that were made for her. Um, we did start teaching... 
uh, language arts through literature in February to see if we would like it. I do not intend to use it as a language arts program. We are using it specifically for literature. I do know there is a little bit of language arts mixed in, um, but I'm definitely using it specifically for uh, literature for her. And we started it at the end of eighth grade because I know she's going to need a literature course um, in ninth grade and beyond in high school. And I wanted to see how we were going to like it before getting into ninth grade, starting it and not liking it and then having to switch. Not to say that I, I shouldn't like it, I don't know, but I've never used it before. I don't know anybody that's used it. I really had no history with that company at all. So I definitely wanted to start it a little bit early. Um, so far it's working out okay. If we do end up using The Good and the Beautiful though, they do have literature in their language arts program. We may end up discontinuing the Learning Language Arts Through Literature uh, program if we go with The Good and the Beautiful. Again, I don't know yet. This is kind of where we are. A little, so a couple things are up in the air. Um, we stopped spelling this year, which was kind of a big deal because, you know, you always talk about spelling and working on spelling. She can spell pretty much anything you tell her to spell. Um, but I noticed that we needed some work on vocabulary. So we actually started Wordly Wise Level 8, which again, you would have seen in that homeschool haul video I did. Again, I started it early, even though I really intended it for ninth grade. Um, I got Level 8 because when I did buy it, she was in eighth grade. And, or she, you know, she was in eighth grade. And it was our first time using the program, so I wanted to make sure I didn't start her too high. There's definitely plenty of words in Level 8 that she's not familiar with, so it's definitely not too easy. I think we like the format. It's working out pretty well, so we definitely continue to we definitely plan to continue to use Wordly Wise um, in ninth grade and probably beyond. Um, so far, so good with that. We finished. I say we. I didn't do anything. She finished teaching textbooks pre-algebra. Um, she finished that, and we actually started the Dave Ramsey Foundations for Middle School program. Um, it's a six-week program, and we. Um, I think we should have been able to get, I don't know, when I'm filming this, she's still working through it. But by the time you see this, she should probably be either pretty close to finishing the program or completely done. So I will be doing a separate review about that. Uh, but I think it's important to teach finance at different levels because they're at different levels of understanding. It worked out perfectly because when she finished pre-algebra with teaching textbooks, we still had about seven weeks of school. And I, I didn't want her to stop doing math, but I didn't want to start teaching textbooks Algebra 1 because she needs that for high school and I wanted to save it for ninth grade. So um, uh, Dave Ramsey came in perfectly the right time. Um, so that's good. It's, so far it's working really well. I know some of these terms that she's going to hear again and she's going to need to dig into them a little bit deeper. But I guess that's the point of the Dave Ramsey Foundations and Foundations Middle School program versus the high school program because this is obviously like more of an introductory, you know, showing these terms, what do they mean, um, some examples, some activities to do, and then I'm assuming the high school version will step it up a bit. So, but like right now, she's learning to balance a checkbook. Nobody taught me that when I was in school. I don't think ever. I, my mom probably taught me. I don't know. But... I don't ever remember learning that, but it certainly wasn't in eighth grade. So I think it's really great to understand about credit and debt and balancing a checkbook and not just using a debit card and hoping you've got enough money in your bank to cover what you're buying, you know. So that's really good. So that's what we did for math this year. We are still using Story of the World with both girls. We are just finishing up level two. Um, we will continue until we finish book three. And then I will probably start her on something that's more a high school level. This is something that's kind of probably controversial. I know that Story of the World is not going to be considered hard enough for high school. But I am 37, almost 38, and I am learning so much from this program, either because I have forgotten it from when I was a kid in school or I never learned it. Whatever the reason, I am learning so much through Story of the World, and I think just because it's not a high school course does not mean that she's not learning anything. And I would rather her learn and remember what she's learning than maybe have a course that's for high schoolers and it's hard enough for high schoolers that she just kind of breezes through with a bunch of dates and she forgets everything. So I'm fine with her continuing on with Story of the World as long as she is learning. I don't care if it's meant for high schoolers or not because I'm learning and I'm definitely way beyond high school and I don't see any harm in doing that. Now obviously in high school she does have to have certain required classes. She's going to have to have an American history class, a um, United States history class. So I do realize we are going to have to switch over at some point which is why I said if we continue Story of the World through the end of book three, I think that should put us right at American history and we should be able to start American history with her in 10th grade. 
that's the plan. Um, so as, as long as it continues to work that way, I'm happy to do it because I really enjoy Story of the World. Um, obviously, I feel like my older daughter is getting a little bit more from it than my younger daughter is, but my younger daughter, I have enough time to cycle through the program again. My oldest daughter, you get to the point where they're older and you feel like, I don't have time to circle through these programs every four years like they're intended to be done. And so um, it's really important for me to make sure that she is learning and remembering as much as she can now because we're not going to be able to cycle through it again. So that's what we're doing for history. Uh, science, Bible, and everything else stayed the same. She is doing um, science through our co-op, and so this year they're doing astronomy and earth, space, earth science and astronomy. Um, and then next year in science, we're going to continue on with more astronomy and earth science. So that is the plan for science. Bible, they're still doing their devotionals. Everything else stayed the same. So now on to my year in review for my youngest daughter. So my youngest daughter started teaching textbooks grade three over the summer, the summer of 2017. I actually started her kind of late summer. So she did it for about a month before school even started. So she had a really good head start in the program. And I did that for a few reasons. One of the reasons was I have never used teaching textbooks with her and I was worried that it may be too difficult for her, for her, but I was wrong. I was wrong because I was not challenging her enough. She was definitely capable of doing those lessons and I was really the one holding her back. And it also gave her a little bit of a boost and head start when school started that she already had, you know, a month's worth of le a month's worth of lessons, you know, completed. So it is going so well. She is almost finished with grade three. She may not finish it before this school year is over, but it's okay because she's got so few lessons left. The plan is to let her finish it over the summer. Um, and the lessons are not that long, so it's not too terrible. Don't, don't yell at me for making her do some school over the summer. Um, and maybe not every day, but definitely, you know, a couple times a week, I want her to do a lesson. And literally, she's only got like 20 lessons left, so she's almost done. Um, and then when she finishes that, we're going to be doing just some basic fun kind of worksheets over the summer just so she doesn't forget what she learned. But I, if you've heard me talk about teaching textbooks before, basically I'm really bad at math. I'm really bad at teaching math. And I have wanted to get both girls into teaching textbooks forever. That was the, the intention the entire time. And with my youngest daughter, we did a couple things before she was ready for teaching textbooks. But now that she's been ready for it and been using it, it's been perfect that both of them are on it. I don't have to teach them math and it grades everything for me and it's perfect. And actually teaching textbooks just release their online programs too. So if that's an option that you would prefer over having the discs, then you can definitely purchase the online version and do it that way. So that is something new they just rolled out. So I thought that would share that. Um, but it is going really well and we do intend to get uh, grade four for her and keep on with teaching textbooks. Um, for writing, we finished her Just Write book, and I'll try to remember to link it because it's kind of an obscure book you don't hear people talk about very often. It was okay. I didn't love it, and I definitely don't feel like it was enough writing for a second grader. Uh, maybe if you have a very reluctant second grader or maybe a first grader, I think it'd be better for that, but their first book I do feel is too easy for a second grader. It was kind of boring. I personally didn't enjoy it. I don't think she really liked it that much either. So we're doing something else for writing. Um, we switched from first language lessons to something else. That's kind of big for me because you guys know how much I love first language lessons for the well-trained mind. I love level one. I did a video about it. Loved it. I did level two. Loved it. We started level three. It's the first level where there's actually a teacher's book and a student workbook. So I was excited about that, that she would actually have a worksheet and things to do um, to go along with the lessons. But I just honestly got really really bored of it and also I know that the upper levels of first language lessons for the well-trained mind get really really hard like I said with my oldest daughter we tried it and it was hard so I knew I would not continue on with that program and so I felt like it may just be a good time to just you know stop while we were ahead you know we enjoyed what we had done so far had a lot of success with level one and level two so just stop and start something else and that kind of left us um, at that point, when that had happened, it was about um, February, maybe March. I think it was, no, it was February. And I didn't know what else to do. I knew we needed a new writing program. I knew we needed a new grammar program. And I had heard so many good things about Bob Jones' uh, writing and grammar program. So, like I said, the younger levels. The older levels, a lot of people don't like. That doesn't mean we won't, but that was kind of what I had been hearing. Everybody I talked to, everybody on YouTube 
loves the Bob Jones University uh, writing and grammar or English um, program because it does mix one week of writing with one week of grammar and one week of writing and one week of grammar. So I knew she'd be getting both things, but again, I didn't want to wait until third grade to start that with her because if I waited and we didn't like it, then I would be in the middle of third grade trying to figure out something else. And I was trying to avoid happening next school year, what happened this year with all these changes. So we started BJU uh, English 3 with her around February of this school year, this past school year. And so far, so good. I mean, it is a little bit more teacher intensive than first language lessons. Even though I'm still having to read the lessons to her, I personally think that the, the teacher's manual is a little hard to keep up with. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. Um, I do feel like it's a little bit more complicated to teach, but as long as she's getting the results and as long as I am able to teach it, um, so far it's working out pretty well. So we just finished our first grammar lesson, like chapter, and then we just finished our first writing chapter. So going to keep, you know, see how it goes. For right now, that's the plan to continue with it for third grade. So we'll see. But that was a change for her. Um, if it doesn't end up working, we do intend to try the good and the beautiful. So I really want to use them. Now I'm kind of like wishing I could use them because I've got these other things, but I don't know. But if that, if Bob Jones doesn't work, we definitely plan to try the good and the beautiful. Um, all about reading level four. We finished level three in uh, second grade and we started level four. We're a good ways into level four right now. We're about lesson 28-ish, 29. Um, so we'll definitely be finishing level four in the beginning um, or first half of third grade. And level four is the all about reading program's last level. So I just can't believe it. I can't believe we've already been through almost all of the levels and she is an amazing reader. I've talked about all about reading so much. I really, really, really love it. I feel like it's the program, like it's my soulmate program. It's not that I just love teaching the lessons. I don't think teaching reading is that fun, but the reason I love it is because it makes it easy for me to teach and it makes it easy for her to understand and it is so amazing. It has worked so well for her. She has learned to read and is such an amazing reader. Even the difference in how she read in the beginning of second grade to now, like her fluency is so good. She's actually ahead of the lessons, even though we're still doing the lessons. Like she can read words beyond um, what the lesson technically is about. You know what I mean? Like she's beyond the lesson that we're on um, just because she's picked it up so well based on the foundation that the other levels of All About Reading have given her. And so it's just an amazing program. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, so I love it, and that's what we continue to use for at least the first half, probably. I don't know how long it'll take us to finish it, but we're going to finish level four in third grade. And then after that, really, she's done with a technical, like, program. It's really at that point going to be about a lot of independent reading, maybe some book reports, and working a lot on fluency. Um, and then comprehension, which is still something we're going to be you know, working on this year, too, but we'll be doing a lot on comprehension, continuing on with that for third grade. Um, what else? Spelling. Oh, spelling. Um, spelling has been the thorn in my side with my youngest daughter for a while now. I just did a video a while back about all about spelling versus all, or no, all about spelling versus spelling you see. You know I love All About Reading, and All About Spelling is the same company, but I did not really enjoy their spelling program after level one. Um, nothing really changed with the program. The program is pretty much the same in all the levels. I just personally got really worn out from teaching it. Trying to teach reading and trying to teach spelling that was kind of teacher intensive, I got a little bit overwhelmed. Um, so we stopped All About Spelling. We started Spelling UC for second grade. The first book was okay. Like I thought maybe it would work. Uh, we started the second book in the, the level we were on, and I just, it was not working for her. I love the idea, and you can watch that video, I'll link it, um, about kind of how I feel about both programs, but I just felt like Spelling UC was just not working for her, and I'm sure it works for lots of people. It just did not work for her at this point. So we switched to Spectrum Spelling, just a basic, cheap workbook you can get at Amazon, um, traditional word list, you know, you get the list, you do the activities every day that are kind of fun, and you take a test on Friday, and so far, that has been working the best for her out of any of the spelling programs we've tried. I think it's the most fun for her, it's the easiest for me, um, and it's been the most successful. So we'll see how that goes, but for now, that's the plan to continue on with that for third grade. And then her science, Bible, and history have not changed either. So that is really everything as far as their curriculum this year went faster than any homeschooling year we have ever had so that was kind of strange 
Um, and I'm excited for some of the new curriculum choices to continue on with Bob Jones, to maybe try Bob Jones with my oldest. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see how continuing on with spectrum spelling for my youngest is going to work. I'm excited about the new science units that we're going to be doing next year for my youngest daughter from The Good and the Beautiful. I think next year the plan, instead of doing a dedicated like set curriculum, it's to do a series of unit studies and things that she is interested in. Because at this age, first of all, I don't put a lot of emphasis on science. I think it's, under, I think it's important to understand the basics and some concepts. Um, but I don't really spend a lot of time on science because our focus has been on what I think is more important, which is math and reading. Um, and spelling. So when we get to science, I usually keep the lessons pretty short, pretty basic, and um, we do plan to step that up a little bit for third grade, but not much. And I really want it to be interest-based. Like what does she like to, to read about and what is she interested in? Because if she's already interested in those things, I feel like she's going to be more successful in learning and remembering about those things if it's something she likes. So She's really into bugs, she's really into flowers and, and planets and stuff like that. So we're going to be doing a uh, The Good and the Beautiful Space Science Unit. We're going to be doing The Good and the Beautiful Anthropods Unit. At some point I've got a little earthworm unit planned. Um, so I'm just going to be filling in the year that way. And the good thing about The Good and the Beautiful Science programs, their unit studies, they are fairly short. You know, they're 10 to 15 or 16 weeks lessons long, so essentially weeks. So we can work through a couple of those units for the entire school year and kind of put together our own curriculum for science. I'm really excited about that. And overall, it was just a really, really great year. I'm excited with the progress that both girls have made. Um, I'm excited for my oldest daughter that she is going to be doing algebra and she is going to be doing so many fun things for high school. I'm excited that my youngest daughter can read so well and now that she can read really well it's fun to go through this stage with her where she's really excited about finding chapter books she's interested in that she likes to read so that's been really fun and one thing that's going to be really fun too the last week of school which may have already happened i don't remember when i'm going to have this video go up but the last week of school i'm actually going to go get a massage i got a gift certificate for a massage two christmases ago and I have yet to use it. So I figured the perfect time to use it would be the last week of school. So my husband stay off during the week, um, that week. I'm gonna go while he's doing school and I'm gonna go get a massage. It's kind of my celebratory, I made it through another school year massage. So that's kind of fun. Maybe I'll make that a yearly tradition, I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was really long. I have a feeling it probably was because I've already lost one little bar of my battery. <laughs> But I really wanted to be thorough and kind of let you know how our year went and kind of my thoughts on certain things that we were doing and things we changed. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and it was helpful. Make sure you check out my homeschooling playlist. It is linked in the description box for you guys. Every single homeschooling video I have ever made is in that playlist. And also stay tuned because pretty soon over the summer you'll be seeing our curriculum choices for third grade and ninth grade. I'm almost done. I've got a few final things to tweak and figure out and then I'll be ready to post that and share that with you guys. So make sure you stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you want to see two of my older videos, you can click the links right here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, and you definitely should, you can click right here. I upload every single week. I have some links in the description box for some of my favorite stores and products, as well as my PO box address. Check out those links if you're interested in those and I will see you guys in the next video.